Hey, how's it going everyone? Mecca here and welcome to the 2022 trivia wrap up of my channel. I'm going to give you guys a little quiz and uh, you, know, you can have fun with it. You can keep track of your score if you want to. You don't have to, no pressure. We're just going to go over the year of 2022 for Fire Emblem in general, my channel in general, and we'll even go a little bit further back, but that's for later. For now, we'll start with some easy questions about, you know, basically this year on, on YouTube for me. Why am I doing this with a weird ass scuffed PowerPoint presentation? Uh, two reasons. For one, I always like doing these little quizzes. Uh, when I was a kid, I would gather my whole family and do like little quizzes, asking questions about all sorts of things I looked up. And I thought it would be funny to bring it back that way. Uh, the other reason is, and this is a very obscure, very far-fetched reason, when I started out on YouTube, I used a very weird editing software. Uh, it was called Active Presenter, I think, which is basically making videos but in a PowerPoint presentation, like in the form of a PowerPoint presentation, like it doesn't look like anything like normal editing software does. It just looked like you're making a PowerPoint presentation. So the very first time Pitfalls videos and everything you saw like that, they are basically PowerPoint presentations like this. So I thought it was a cool callback that way. But that's more for me personally. That's just a little Easter egg. It's a little trivia, if you will. So let's get into the questions. Uh, we'll start with easy mode, you know, start easy, and then we'll build up the difficulty as we go along. All right, first question. Hope you're ready. Who? is my graphic designer and you have four options you can choose rin raisins m or oshi who makes these thumbnails who makes all these visuals that you can see on the screen right here uh well not the not the background obviously that's just generic um open office backgrounds uh but the thumbnail you clicked on uh the backgrounds for tier lists um that kind of stuff who made those now if your answer was rin you are correct she makes these, she's been making these for years, she's absolutely, absolutely wonderful at her job. Um, every week I just throw a list of things I'm going to need for a week and uh, pretty much always have them in time. Super nice. So thanks a lot to Rin. Of course, the other people in the list are not insignificant either. Like, I, I didn't throw them there just to throw you guys off. All these people are super important and there was a lot of other people I could have thrown here as well, but only wanted to have four choices. Raisins, aka Original Raisins, is of course the co-host for most of our recent Let's Plays. I counted and I think I have four Let's Plays with him, but I might have forgotten one. Uh, Ignorant Dawn right now, before that we have Path, Igno Path of Ignorance. And before that we had, uh, of course, the Awakening playthrough was the first one he was on. And of course the Linding Blade, uh, the Binding Blade with, with Lin, that playthrough. Uh, I enjoy playing along with Raisins, I like having someone to bounce off of. Uh, Raisins is just as much of a nerd as I am, uh, just as obsessed with like all kinds of little things about Fire Emblem that I am, that it's really fun to uh, to talk with. So I've really been enjoying working with, with Raisins. Uh, originally I met Raisins through draft racing, and at the time I was doing Let's Plays with Bismix, but uh, after Radiant Dawn, Bismix said, you know, I'm going to be busy. Uh, this is a pretty huge time commitment, we should maybe switch it up. Uh, so I went looking for a real co- for a, not a real co-host, Bismix is a real co-host. Uh, I went looking for a different co-host, and uh, Raisins has been really enjoyable to work with. So thank you to Raisins, thank you for Rin as well. Uh, if you picked M, I can't entirely blame you because uh, M is very skilled with visuals. M has made uh, two videos for me, I do believe, uh, the top 15 worst bosses and uh, the Clive Waifu, which came out this year, was a huge project. Uh, and I'm really glad we got finished because it's such a wonderful video now. Uh, really amazing, the work she does. And, uh, you know, you know, for the last few years, uh, we've been hanging out a lot. And, uh, I don't know, I've been enjoying it. And I've also been enjoying our work a lot. So, shout out to M. And also Hoshi, another video editor that I've worked with for quite a long while. Hoshi made the Catherine and Lysithia waifus from a long while ago. And this year he made the video all about the intern button. And, you know, the, the, the wheel of the, not the wheel of death, that's a different one. The ball of death, the giant ball of death that you do when you're playing Fire Emblem very slowly, you know, turtling through the map, beating enemies one by one, that video. Uh, he made that. So, Hoshi is someone who also delivers very consistent quality. He knows how to make shit post the humor, but he also knows how to make, like, good-looking visuals, and I really enjoy that aspect of his videos. Uh, but there's a ton of people I could put on here that I don't have room for, uh, but I thought these questions were a nice opportunity to say thanks to people who make my year more enjoyable and make my videos either look better, sound better, uh, or just make them better in some way way, shape, or form. But thanks to everyone who did so. Uh, I have a couple of editors that I haven't been able to introduce to you guys yet uh, that are working on some videos for me that I, I can't wait to show off as well. So look out for that in 2023 and onwards. All right, next question. Which game did not feature on the channel in 2022? I got four games here you can pick from and 
Three of them were on my channel, one of them was not. Which one was not? We got Fire Emblem 1, aka Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, I think it's called, or Sword of Light. Uh, FE8, the Sacred Stones, Berwick Saga, and Hades. Uh, might be a bit of a trick question, but then again, it's still easy mode, so please don't be fooled. Now, if you guessed Berwick Saga, you are correct. I have not played Berwick Saga. I played Tearing Saga this year, but not Berwick Saga. Uh, the other games, I've all played them. FE1 was only visible on the Tears review, which was at the beginning of this year, uh, with Danny Doyle, where we went over the FE1 characters, made sure they were in the right place. FE8, I think I only featured in like some kind of modified capacity, uh, like a randomizer, like the randomized chaos that featured every game between FE4 and FE8, and some other weird ways as well. Um, there's Tearing Saga, which I did play, but it's not on this list, and then there's Hades, uh, which is a game I did play quite a bit this year, actually. And I had like three or... F I think I had three Hades streams where I showed off how amazing this game is. But I thought it might throw some people off because, you know, it's not a Fire Emblem game. All right, next. Who co-hosts the Unit Fuel series? And yes, this series actually existed this year, just at the start of this year. So it might be a little while. We're getting... Slowly getting towards the harder difficulties here. Um, but you can pick between Irisa, uh, Bopper... Kirby Master and Quimpage. One of these co-hosted Unifuel, and the others co-hosted other things. Now, dear trainers, if you guessed Bopper, you are correct. Professor Bopper is a video essayist and streamer, mostly of Fire Emblem, Iron Man runs, other scuffed runs. But he is also the inventor of the term Unit Feel, and I've really enjoyed working with him on those. It's been a while since we did a video, we should probably get another one going at some point, get some people to submit characters. Uh, I've there's definitely a lot of units I've changed my mind on, like how they feel unit-wise. Units I've actually tried out, so uh, I do look forward to doing one of those. And Bopper in general, it's just a, just a pleasure to hang out with. Doesn't mean the others are not significant though. Irisa, they generously co-host my Tyrion Saga uh, Let's Play, which I've been thoroughly enjoying. Uh, as painful as the old Tyrion Saga can be, uh, UI-wise, like how laggy it is, it is a very enjoyable game and Irisa helps me with the decisions that are difficult to make or like figuring out little obscure things that Kaga tried to hide from me uh, like the, the dreaded plum event and others uh, let me let me see all the obscure things answer my questions so I you know I have someone to talk with that actually knows the game well which is super helpful just great co-host all around thank you Irisa uh, if you have seen the name Irisa before that's probably either because you saw Plinket Emblem where they supplied uh, the voice of the translator kind of character that has all the original Japanese information. Uh, they also co-wrote the whole project. In fact, I would, I, I think it's more accurate to say that Irisa wrote it and I co-wrote it because most of the text is written by them. Uh, but did a wonderful job, and yeah, and Irisa was also on FE4 Reverse Crimson, which is even longer ago. That's like super ancient history. Um, Kirby Master and Gwimpage are both Fire Emblem speedrunners. Kirby Master you probably know because either because you saw them on HGDQ or on uh, RPG Limitless, uh, or because you saw my videos where I show off his speedruns while we both commentate them. So we did FE9 that way, FE6, and uh, Radiant Dawn as well. Almost every time after I finish a playthrough, um, I have Kirby Master on, and uh, we have him, uh, you know, commentate the speedrun. It's been super, super nice, and I can make nice clickbaity thumbnails, like, uh, can you beat this game in one hour, two hours? Usually you can. And Gwibbage is also a speedrunner, but you might know him because this year we finished the Conquest Lunatic series. I think I called it Two Lunatics, One Conquest. Uh, every time I play Fates again, I gain more respect for that game in some way, shape, or form. And Gwibbage is a huge part of that. I really enjoyed the Conquest Let's Play that we did together. It was mostly him playing and me just asking silly questions or proposing silly things or making him use Odin for something. <laughs> uh, but it was very, very enjoyable. I love Gwimbridge's like relaxed, positive vibe and everything else. So that was really nice. Again, there was many people that I've had on during the year that I could have put here. Uh, these were just four names that came to mind. But this is my way of saying thank you to all these people, even if you're not included in this multiple choice list in particular. Okay. So, we are done with easy mode. Now it's time for hard mode. So now I'm going to ask more questions that might not even be the most relevant for this year, but just the channel in general and the long history. So if you're a long-time fan, now is your time to show off your knowledge or show off how much of your time you've used watching my videos, whichever makes you feel better. So let's get into Hector hard mode. First question, what is the first video on my channel? 
What is the first video I ever published? Is it FE4 Re Reverse Recruitment Part 1? If you paid attention, you might know something about this. Uh, is it FE6 Chapter 1 in 4 turns? Is it Isadora Owns Linus? Or is it Killing the Demon King with Slim Lance Tana? One of these is the first video. All of them are really old, but one of them is the first. The correct answer for this one is... Isadora Owns Linus. You can see the channel content tab of my creative studio here where I have all my videos sort of by date with the first one published at the top which is Isadora Owns Linus which uh, somehow is sitting at a massive 48,000 views even though it has like way, it has way less frames. <laughs> if it, every time I put that thing into another video I'm like damn there's like five frames in here it's more of a PowerPoint presentation than this freaking video. Uh, but yeah that's, the, that's my first video ever. It's just me playing a Paladin solo and it's just one turn where I attack Linus with Isadora and she double crits and she bails me out of a tough situation because yeah, Linus in the final chapter and Lloyd especially are pretty mean. <laughs> it's such a weird video. Uh, I The early days of my channel were mostly just me posting random stuff that I accomplished or did that seemed silly in Fire Emblem, only later did I start doing actual Let's Plays, like much later. Uh, one of those Let's Plays uh, that I did do fairly early on is the uh, FE6 individual chapter low turn counts where I would uh, play a chapter of FE6 as if it was as if the entire game was built around low turning it. So late game I would spend like literally six warp uses just to get Roy to the throne on turn one. And then what I would do is reset afterwards and play from the beginning. And uh, I did a little I did a little funny here, a little trick here. Answer B is FE6 chapter one in four turns. That video doesn't exist. The first one in that run is chapter two in six turns because I played chapter one in such a way that Roy and Alan I think had like super rigged levels with the idea that will make you beat chapter 2 faster. And that's the only thing I wanted to show off, like how fast can you beat chapters if you've been playing the previous chapters as if you're preparing for them. So for chapter 1, you're starting with base units. I was bad at using just units at their bases, haha, <laughs> funny. <laughs> but uh, for chapter 2, I could rig levels, make a unit like really overpowered, boss abuse even if I wanted to. So I did that. Like for chapter, I think, 15 onwards or something, I had like a Lina with 30 magic and A rank stabs. Obviously, that's not realistic in a playthrough where you're low turn counting. But in this one, you know, you can just do whatever I want. Uh, but yeah, chapter 1 didn't exist. I didn't do that one. Uh, Demon King with uh, Slimlands Tana is not an early video, but not the very first one. And I think for reverse recruitment later, that, that came later. That was a later project. Anyway, um, question number 5. And this might seem like a weird one. When did I launch my Patreon? Uh, February 2019, July 2019, April 2020, or July 2020. Now, those of you who have ever taken history classes in any school might be like, Becca, why are you asking me for dates? That's so boring. Uh, the reason is that all these dates in some way are significant and I have something to say on all of them. So if you know some of these dates and their significance, you might be able to cross those answers off and uh, pick the right one. Um, but hopefully you picked correctly. Uh, the right answer is April 2020. Um, as you can see here, the video that where I launched it was published on April 27, 2020. That's when I did it. It was in the middle of the pandemic, so it was a little strange for me to... In a time where everyone was uncertain about everything in their lives, including their income and their job and everything else. Hey, can I please have some of your money so I can keep making YouTube videos? But I've always wanted to make a Patreon, even before that, when I started knowing I was be becoming more serious about making YouTube videos. So... And I was putting it off very long because I wanted to make it a perfect launch. I was afraid of screwing myself over. I was like, I can only do this once. So I was really afraid to launch that video. But at some point I said, all right, whatever. If it's imperfect, it's still going to be better than if I don't do it at all. So I just pushed myself to do it at the end. Um, and that's when it culminated into April 27, 2020, uh, which is, I think, about, I would say, like four months into the pandemic, basically. Uh, max. It depends on like, when you view uh, it starting. Um, but there it is. And... Uh, I couldn't make videos like this or any video like this without the help of my Patreon. So this is my opportunity to say thank you to all those. I know I say that a lot and it might sound annoying, but uh, it's just the mental load it takes off of me to know that no matter how good or bad the video does in the algorithm or anything like that, it takes so much time, like so much mental space off of that, knowing that I'll still get paid at the end of the month uh, with a set amount. And that freedom is indescribably nice. It's super, super 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 appreciate it so if you've supported me at any time financially through donations or patreons or anything like that thank you so much the other dates are also significant uh february 2019 um 
July 2019 and July 2020. Now, I'll start with the bottom one because, you know, that's the elephant we got to get uh, out of the room, so to speak. Um, Manx in July 2020 is a video I made this year, February, so it's sort of significant to 2022. And it was a huge load off me because I've been working on that video for, I don't know, we're, we're talking months and maybe even a year. Like it took so long to process everything needed for that video and uh, finalize the script and then read it out and then edit it in such a way that was both accurate and respectful to everyone involved. And that was just a really difficult balance to do and a lot of work. So uh, I'm super glad that was out of my system. Uh, July 2020, if you don't know anything about it, at la some later point, a less festive day, maybe watch the video because I do think it is probably the most important video I have ever made, but it is also not a very happy video. So I don't blame you if you don't watch it, especially not right now. Uh, but if you know, then you know how important this video was to me and I didn't want to not mention it at all. It sucks that we'll probably never have a proper conclusion to the events of July 2020. Uh, I think the way it is, is probably the way it's going to be on all fronts and that sucks. It does really suck. But it is what it is. It sucks. The other dates. Uh, it's just, there's no good way to pivot away from that, but the other dates. Uh, February 2019 is the launch of Mecha's Keep, the Discord server. One day I was just streaming and someone asked, hey Mecha, why don't you have a Discord server? Have you ever thought of making a Discord server? And I was like, well, I've thought about it, but I don't want to spend my time maintaining it because if I spend time working on a Discord server, uh, settling disputes between people or working with moderators or whatever, it's time I can't spend on videos. And someone said, well, what if I run it for you? And that was Pushy, and Pushy set up the server, and uh, you know, it was uh, it works pretty well. <laughs> it's, it's still active today. I see a lot of people there. I hang out there uh, every day, uh, usually mostly in my Patreon chat, because it's a bit more contained, and I've built up friendships with a lot of people there. Uh, but every now and then, I check out the other channels, and uh, I'm happy that the community there is still thriving, that there's an active moderation team that's, uh, you know, still helping out, making sure things keep tidy, and, uh, you know, just maintaining order, basically. I, I enjoy that. I really enjoy the, the, the Discord server and the state it's in. Uh, Pushy's no longer active, unfortunately, he got busy, but he handed the server to Dultimate, who has been maintaining it ever since. So thanks to you both for everything you've done for Discord server, as well as my mods and everyone else who helps out. So, uh, and everyone who hangs out too. Like, I, I'm glad I have a Discord server and I'm glad I get all the advantages of having one uh, with very little in the way of having to do with it. Like, I don't have to do anything with the Discord server if I don't want to, but it's very nice that it's there. And occasionally there's some nice event on it. Uh, occasionally I use it for something uh, like anime chess submissions uh, or things like it was something, uh, the, the Mecha's Keep anniversary that comes up, I think it's in February. Well, yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously it's in February. Uh, that's like an opportunity for ROM hackers to make a fun hack that I can display on a channel. It's just, that stuff is just good. It's, it's a good feel when the community is nice. So uh, that's February 2019. Uh, July 2019 is the launch of Fire Emblem Three Houses. I don't think I need to say a whole lot about this because obviously that was huge for the Fire Emblem community and for my channel as well. Uh, I like Three Houses still to this day. Uh, the game is, I mean, it, it obviously burnt me out a little bit, but I was just super happy with the launch and everything. It was not everything I wanted from a game, but it was just nice to have a new Fire Emblem game. And I really enjoy a lot of aspects about it. And my first playthrough was a lot of fun, especially. So great experience. And I wanted to commemorate that by having it here in this question. Um, so that's all of them, because April 2020 was the right answer. Why don't we move on to question six? Six, which of these weapons killed a final boss this year in my Let's Plays? You have to pick two. There are two correct answers and two wrong answers. So uh, I guess if you're doing points, you can get two points in this question. Uh, so we have the Binding Blade, Ragnell, the Light Brand, and the Soul Kati. Now, trainers, the correct answers were the Ragnell and the Light Brand. The other two were not correct. So the Ragnell is pretty obvious, right? That's ignorance, Path of Ignorance, I should say. It probably will be ignorant though as well. Uh, that's when I killed uh, Ashtar. Yeah, sure. There's not much else you could do there unless you use Gifka for it. Uh, the Lightbrand, on the other hand, uh, that's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? That's from the Linding Blade. Uh, the chat wanted me to kill Idun with Lin. I put a poll there. I said, I can either kill with Lin or with Roy. What do you want? And they wanted Lin. So I went with Lin. And the most humiliating way to do it was the Lightbrand. <laughs> I'm sorry, Idun. I like Idun and all, but, you know, chat made their choice. So I went with the Lightbrand. Does 10 damage exactly, uh, which is less than they usually did in that playthrough because she was very good. Um, I could have, it could have been a Soul Cardi, it could have been the Binding Blade. I chose to do the Light Brand. 
But um, yeah, once again, this was a super fun Let's Play. I mentioned it earlier when I was talking about raisins, but uh, this was a really fun project that I wanted to do for a long time, putting the linen, linen in the binding blade and seeing how well she worked out. So super happy that it did work like this. Cool. Let's do the next one. Let's get into Lunatic Maddening Super Death Mode. These questions, if you know the answer to these questions, you've definitely spent a lot of time on my channel. And, you know, I'm grateful for that, but <laughs> don't stick to the screen too closely, right? Anyway, this is a very obscure question. Jill uses a forged iron axe in Ignorant Dawn. What is the name of that axe? It has a name, that forge. What is it? It's a very notable forge. But it's again, it's a bit of a trick question, but you're playing Lunatic Maddening Super Death Mode, so you should be able to handle it. What is the answer? Now, if you guessed the Wi-Fi axe, you are correct. It is the Wi-Fi axe. <laughs> At one point, uh, Basin said, yeah, uh, it's the Wi-Fi axe because it always connects because we forced hits on it. But it, actually, the real joke is that uh, it's it was meant for Nolan initially, and then we benched Nolan kind of and went for the steel instead. And uh, Nolan, you can separate it, didn't know LAN, so you have like no LAN, so you use a different kind of network, like a Wi Fi network. It's funnier when you don't explain it, but I enjoyed the joke, joke a lot when it came up. So I was like, you know what? Let's let's do a question that rewards those who watch my Let's Plays, because, uh, you know, you're all the, the real MVPs. Next one. What is the first video linked on Mechalus Monday? And that is actually the video from this very blurb that you see right here. So. The, the shout out is right below this. If you click, if you were to click read more right now, you would see the answer. Obviously, you guys have to guess first. What is the first video linked on Mechalus Monday? If you just know the creator, that's pretty good too. Like, I'll give you half points for that. Well, the real answer is Lolo Antonia's FE5 Iron Man LTC. That's the first video I linked on a on a Monday. Uh, I started taking Mondays off apparently ten months ago, roughly. I was like, making videos is quite a bit of work. Uh, I put like a whole explanation in the community post a, a week before if you are curious. Um, basically, a video that's like t 15 minutes long doesn't take 15 minutes to make. It takes closer to an hour to make or even more. And you might be like, oh, there's hours, many hours in a day. But um, some videos take even more work than that through planning and everything. Plus recording things requires a high energy level. So you can't just record like five videos in a day and not sound super tired for them. So I decided at some point in my life, I need to have a day off. And I, I call it a day off as if I don't do anything on Mondays. But realistically, what I'm doing is I'm spreading six days of work over seven days so that I have less work every day. That's the way I maintain it. Sometimes I take a day off. Sometimes I use the Monday so I can take another day off for festivities or just hang out with family or friends or something like that. But generally, this is the way that it works. I just have less work every day because I can take the Monday off. I'm super grateful for that. Uh, it hasn't impacted the channel too much as far as I can tell, uh, or at least it, I can't tell what has impacted my channel, but I don't think the day off is really killing me here. And if it is, whatever. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather be happy for six days a week than be working seven days a week and not be happy. You know what I mean? So it's been super nice and, uh, you know, I just enjoy it. It's just going from uh, uploading, I think, three days a week and then streaming two days a week. I think that's correct. Maybe, I might be missing them. It might be four uploads a week. Yeah, and then two streams a day. Yeah, two streams a week. Yeah, that, that's a lot better than having five uploads and, and, and two streams. It's so much better. Uh, insane. So I might ditch the, the Monday off for when Engage comes out because I do want to publish a video every day when a game is new. Uh, that's what I did for the Fire Emblem Warriors game that came out, uh, Three Hopes. But generally speaking, um, this has been a big improvement. So I'm glad everyone was very supportive of it. I knew you all would be because you're all great. Uh, but... I was just like, I hope this will go well. Uh, but yeah, it's been super nice. Now, I specifically made for this question, um, I specifically want for Lolo shout out because Lolo is also part of another big project that I have been doing for every year, two years in a row now. So we're on a two year streak, uh, which is Low Fire Emblem. Uh, we published two albums now. Uh, and when I say we, what I really mean is I made one tweet uh, last year saying we should make low fire emblem music because the name is funny and then lolo hit me up and lolo really coordinates low fire emblem all by herself basically well not all by herself but she does most of the work and she has found most of the other people that are in charge of it and she's been coordinating it really well and it was super enjoyable to work with her as well uh, once the the team got going once lolo had the people i kind of sat back and 
<laughs> let other people do most of the work because I don't know anything about composing or producing or anything like that with music. I just enjoyed the name. I thought it was funny and I knew I had to reach uh, to find a lot of other artists. So that's what I was for. And then once I reeled them in, I just kind of directed them to Lolo and to uh, her channel on my server. And then later uh, they made a server of their own. And uh, it just kind of went forward without my help. I was just there like going like, oh, this track is good. Oh, this track is good. And that was pretty much all I did until it came to editing. And then I did the video editing for Lo Fire Emblem. I did compile the video and uh, that's a lot of fun. Uh, both albums are available on YouTube still on my channel for free. You can watch them. Uh, the profits, the ad revenue goes to, um, what's it called? Charity. <laughs> I think it's War Child for both years uh, because I, I'm usually in favor of paying artists for their work. Uh, I'll, in fact, I'm always in favor of that. But for this kind of project, it's just so hard to determine who should get which bit of the money. Uh, because it's such a mess like and I think the project is more fun if you're not doing it to get paid if you're just doing it because you enjoy making music and so we just decided all right it's gonna be split up so many ways let's just give it all the charity instead and make it more wholesome so we gave it to War Child and uh, everyone's been happy with that as far as I know and it's been a huge success really enjoy it so yeah both of these albums are super great if you haven't given them a listen you should because it's from very great lo-fi Fire Emblem remixes. Everyone knows Fire Emblem soundtracks are great. And uh, this is definitely a big part of my summers usually because I think we did both projects in summer. So I spent quite a bit of time working on this one. And uh, we always launched it with Premiere too, which has been super great to have people live react to the hack or to the to the musical, the, not to the hacks, not to the Loram hacks. Live react to the music has been super nice. Okay, so that's why the shout out to Lolo is here. I think I have one more question. And this is a very simple one. What is the very first Fire Emblem Pitfall? What's the very first one? I don't know if this fits into this super death manding lunatic kind of difficulty, but I thought it'd be a funny one to close it out with. What's the very first Fire Emblem Pitfall? I think you can all probably remember the video, but can you remember which is the very first one? Why would you know that? I don't know, that's why it's a trivia question. It's useless knowledge. The answer is because I saved this question for last. <laughs> I have a couple things to say about Fireman Pitfalls. Um, I enjoy making this series, I enjoy writing this series, but it's harder to make now than it used to be. And the reason for that is I think everyone online who is in the Fireman community is a lot better at Fireman now. And I don't want to say that's all because of me, but I do think a lot of people just got better at Fireman some way, somehow. I think I'm not even that good at Fire Emblem in the first place, in my opinion. I think I was better than most people when I first made those videos. Uh, but now I think almost everyone has the basic knowledge that I have to. Uh, like, almost everyone that is able to find my videos or just be in the online sphere in general knows that using pre promotes is good, uh, hoarding your items is bad, uh, paying too much attention to growth is uh, not a good idea, just you should also check out bases, stuff like that. Most people know that stuff by now, so it's hard to come up with something that a lot of people are doing wrong, that to, you know, exaggerate a little bit, because there's really no wrong way to play Fire Emblem, obviously, it's a single player game, you can do, you can beat the games while making a lot of mistakes or suboptimal things. In fact, often we do that on purpose because it's funny, like, everyone who, most people who train a bad unit, or most people who do something weird, like killing everything with iron weapons, they know it's not optimal, but they're not playing the game to be optimal. They're playing the game to have fun. That's the most important part. Um, but it's very hard to come up with something that a lot of people do because they think it's a good idea, even though they're just making the game harder on themselves. That's what the goal of Fire Emblem Pitfalls always was, is uh, like go against commonly believed ideas that seem like a good idea, but actually are not. That was literally the first sentence describing what a Fire Emblem Pitfall is. And everyone should you know, decide how to play on themselves, but I do think it's fine to put out knowledge about how you can play the game better if you want to, if you're looking to get better at it. And I've seen a lot of people come up to me and be like, hey, your videos help me with Fire Emblem and help me make me a better player, so thank you. And I appreciate that. But that also makes Fire Emblem pitfalls harder to write nowadays, because what is even a pitfall nowadays if everyone knows what they're doing to some certain extent? And that's why I made a video like the, the dancer video, um, the video about, you know, don't ditch your dancer. Uh, there's not that many people that actually ditch their dancer, but even if you know that dancers are good, it can still be a little tricky to use them. So I was I was happy to provide a video showing how you can use a dancer. Uh, like, what are some like tips to make it easier to use this unit that you know is good, but it's kind of tricky to utilize. So, uh, checking enemy ranges, using terrain to make it easier to see where the enemies could reach, maybe. Um, rescue dropping, 
uh, making sure your dancer's not rescued at the end of a turn, uh, using pair up, using shelter dance, stuff like that. You know, just to make it a little bit uh, more accessible to people who already know that dancers are good. And that's a hard subject to find. Lately, I've been finding myself writing videos about specific subjects without invoking pitfalls. Like, you could write the videos that I want to make about pitfalls without, you know, even involving pitfalls. A good example of this is that uh, Giant Ball of Death video, the, the, the end turn button video. That could have been a Fireman Pitfall video if I wanted to frame it that way. But I decided it, it's better to just have the subject matter be the center of the thing and leave pitfalls out of it for a moment. As, as cool as the Pitfalls brand is, I mean, I love the logo, it's so cool. I can't believe I'm still able to use it, it's so cool. Um, but as, as cool as it is, uh, it's not needed anymore for me to get, to get the subject matter across, I think. So that's why I've been slow on producing Fireman Pitfalls. I just work on the, like, the same subject I would write for, for Pitfalls, but without the name Pitfalls on it, basically. So that's why the series is not dead, but it's kind of hibernating right now. Unless there's something really weird and engaged that everyone thinks is a good idea, then uh, this will probably be the way it is for, for quite a while. Anyway, uh, that's all the question I got. I hoarded this one for the very end, and this is the very end, so all that remains is for me to say um, Happy New Year, everyone. Hope 2023 is good for you. Um, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.